Hey everyone. Hey everyone, it's stream time. It's stream time. Just got here playing some video games. Um. Oh, um. So 20th Hydra. Uh. Weird situation to be in, and I'm trying to juggle what to talk about first. Um. Also, there's a video game happening, which I'm very excited about. So. Uh. God, I'm really gonna talk about this first thing. Okay, so, uh. My, be my like, intro rolls had clips up to catch a predator on it. And 20th Hydro was wondering why anyone would sign away their likeness to be on a show like that. Um, uh, there's a couple of reasons. Um, and yes, I understand how terrible it is that I just opened a this whimsical, all ages appropriate, soaring heights and, and, and delightful game talking about pedophilia, but here we are. Um, that's just, that's just the way the, the, the paper folds crumple sometimes. Alright, so, uh, I have two bits of information about that that are largely anecdotal. One, one was an interview with a cast, a crew member on the show Cops, the reality show that's now, uh, gone. Uh, cancel culture got it, but, uh, uh, that was a joke, by the way. Holy shit, please don't take me seriously. Um, I'm, I'm willing to give that show up, just to be clear. Anyway, uh, there was an interview with a cast member, I think it was like a Reddit AMA or something, and somebody was like, why do people sign away their likenesses all the time? And the person there had two very interesting, very interesting uh, observations, having, having watched it happen. One is that, uh, the scummier one, is that if you put paperwork in front of people, while they're just so out of sorts, they'll sign. And that's the kind of scummy part, but they're still doing it, but like, somebody who's just been arrested, is undergone a very traumatic experience. Um, in addition to being arrested for whatever reason or having their encounter with the cops, they also have a production crew coming by with paperwork. And I think it's probably something like, uh, like your brain just can't handle any more complicated thoughts or wondering about the future or reading a contract, so you just sign the release. You, a lot of people apparently just react that way. They just, just sign it and get it going. Um, there's another kind of person that understands fully what the what the release is. Uh, no, not a cast member, sorry, a crew member uh, of the show cops, specifically. Um, the other part is that there are a lot of people who are actually genuinely remorseful for how they behave. And legitimately, and more, more than you'd think, people signed releases on the show cops because they actually wanted their story to be known so that other people might learn from their mistakes. The crew member said that was actually something that happened fairly often. I interpret that to mean like somebody is feeling bad in the moment and they think that this will alleviate some of their guilt. I'm a little more cynical about it, I guess. Uh, I know how people can be, like shift in modes and shift in morality sometimes. And when you've been cuffed for something you either know you did wrong or just somewhere inside you, I think you feel like if you do that. It forces you to be honest with yourself or the world about what you did, and it's some measure of atonement. So those are the two things, and I could see both of those being, um, well, not for some of those members. So, like, there's... It's it's curious about To Catch a Predator, specifically, because there are... Um, there are people on that show that, like, their lives were straight up ruined. And I don't think they would be in a position of being like, I'll give all this away. Uh... Just because I wanted to diddle a kid. I'm in I'm in law enforcement. I would imagine some believe the tape will aid in their defense. Oh. Well, the tape would still be there whether or not you sign away your likeness to be on TV, right? I mean, but you could be right. The uh, Your individual uh, suspect, person of interest, uh, could think that. That, like, the tape will justify what I did or something. That's interesting. Yeah. It, it may also be something like it's filmed in a state that doesn't require uh, like mutual mutual agreement. It's kind of that's why Cheaters is filmed in Texas because Texas is a one-party state when it comes to recording, which is ostensibly why they're allowed to put cameras and stuff in their home and then record their partner without their partner knowing about it. These are not things I should be talking about at the beginning of a whimsical game like Paper Mario and the Origami King. So, um... Let me talk about video games for a little bit. Or actually, let me let me just put out my... I'm in a weird state of mind right now. I'll put that out there. So if I'm acting weird today, I don't know what it is. You know some days you just wake up and maybe it's a dream you had or a way you feel... And there's just, you just can't escape from a certain emotion? So I just feel pretty anxious today. I don't know... I don't know why. 
I don't know why. So my mind's all kind of jumbled up right now. So that's also why I'm playing Paper Mario specifically, uh, instead of like something like Ghost of Tsushima, which I'll probably play later. But uh, yeah, I just woke up with like kind of a tight chest and just a little addled about stuff, and I'm not sure why. So yeah, emotions be like that. So uh, it's weird because you know. Uh, in any other job, you can suppress these things, I think. Uh, like, if you're sending emails to people, you can feel that stuff, but still be like, okay, this email, I'll write it like I normally write it, let me check it, okay, I'll send it. Like, you, there's there's gates there. I feel like uh, live streaming is a bit of a different beast, so... If, uh, if my mannerisms are off, if I react sharply to anything, it's just because, man, I'm in a mood. I, I'll just say it, I don't know why. I've been trying to work myself out of it. Um, maybe I need to eat more. This might be the beginning of... Shit. This might be it. Uh, this might be the beginning of a, of a cycle that I've experienced before where when I cut calories really, really, really hard, my uh, emotional endurance starts to drop. Maybe that's what it is. Okay, I'll be on the lookout for that. I'll be on the lookout for that. Uh, okay, apart from that. I don't know if story's happy or not. Uh, I've honestly had something that's been bugging me nonstop, and so I can empathize with a sense of anxiousness but no direction for it. Mm, okay. Oh, anybody feels good. Yeah, it might just be low blood sugar. Who knows? Okay, Paper Mario. Heading to some kind of festival. And that's how you start a story. Um, it's like, isn't this great? We're going somewhere. Uh, I like Paper Mario a lot. I have a weird relationship with it. I adored Super Mario RPG, which I know is not technically related to Paper Mario. And I played Paper Mario and was bummed it wasn't Super Mario RPG 2. Uh, then I played Thousand Year Door, and it's one of the m most my most favorite games of all time. And then I played Super Mario... Wait, what was it called? Super Paper Mario. And I was like, this is not Thousand Year Door 2, and I was kind of bummed about it. Although, in retrospect, the, ch the shadows of my memories tell me that there was a lot more going on in Super Paper Mario than I recognized at the time. I needed it to be Thousand Year Door 2, and it wasn't. Because I was also kind of depressed then. Uh, I had the I have to be an adult now blues, and I was really hoping Super Paper Mario was going to take me back to that like one wonder, lore, and whimsy of Thousand Year Door, and it, and it didn't. Uh, so I, it's tough for me to not be a little bitter about it. Uh, I really, really, really loved Color Splash. Did I miss one in there? Sticker Star, yeah. I played Sticker Star for like five hours, and yeah, it was it was the thing everyone complains about that like the combat doesn't matter, and you still have to do a lot of it. Um, I, I, I found myself just trying to run directly to the end of a, of a level and skip all the fights and stuff like that, because, yeah, they truly didn't matter. Um, and they weren't very fun to do. Like, it wasn't, they weren't difficult challenges to solve. Yeah, I miss the RPG side, too, and I don't, I don't necessarily need, like, stats and menus for that. Mostly because there are a ton of stats and menus RPGs out there right now. I think. It feels like it, you know? So I don't feel underserved, particularly. It's more that Thousand Year Door was just so goddamn good. So, you know, I, I, I think at long last I'm willing to entertain the idea that Paper Mario is more of an aesthetic and a Get sensibility me, than it is a gameplay type. Um, and I don't know why it took me so long to come to that realization. Oh, Deity, thank you. I appreciate that. Still feel like it fits and has good humor and story unlike Sticker Star? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I just walked away from Sticker Star. It, it just felt like there wasn't much there. You know what it did? You know what it is? When I played Sticker Star, after a few hours, I was like, I must have had to have been a Japanese kid to get this. Because so much of that game is, like, pinned in this nostalgia for sticker collecting that I just didn't go through that. And it, I actually, you know what? It was such a peculiar sensation of feeling like this game is depending on warm feelings towards a thing I just don't have. And it made me wonder if that's like, is that is that what it's like to be in other countries and have most of the big movies be American? And you're like, this is leaning on stuff that just doesn't hit with me. But it's big and stupid. Anyway, I was curious about that. Uh, wouldn't classify Paper Mario 64 as an RPG either, and it was excellent. Yeah, I just, I rented Paper Mario. That's back when I had to rent stuff. And uh, I was just so bummed that it wasn't Super Mario RPG, either musically or, or aesthetically. I do have to admit, though, like, 
But then there's the Mario and Luigi series, which is amazing. I don't think there's a bad game in it. And those kind of, for me at least, marriage the, the gameplay of Super Mario RPG and the humor of Thousand Year Door. So really, like, and I haven't played all those either, but I've loved those. Uh, I beat two of them and did half of two of them. So, the Mario, Mario RPG series, this is, it's actually a really complicated landscape. There's a lot to, like, talk about in there. Bowser's Inside Story is my favorite Mario & Luigi game. The pro I, have, I have bits and scenarios that I remember that are my favorite, but I don't remember which specific games they came from. <laughs> Brave Nintendo, you made a paper 3D. It is interesting that, like, I, I can already feel that they found ways to make the 2D Paper Mario representation more expressive. Also, just the aesthetic of Paper Mario is really, really cute. It's just the cutest. Is he riding his go-kart? Sometimes I worry that the, probably, probably in an effort to like unify with, uh, like Nintendo Land, the theme parks and stuff, that there is going to be more managed rules about what the Mario universe is and how it looks. There was that comment from that interview, which is a decent interview, there were a couple of good insights in it, but that comment from one of the producers, or director, I think, of Origami King. Basically saying they weren't allowed to enter... They weren't allowed to change the Mario universe anymore, so everything had to come from outside. They had to, like, make new villains and new characters. Is it stuttering? Oh, is it happening again? Is anyone else getting, getting bad stutters? Ah, uh, the in-game engine looks looks fairly uh, kinda uh, definitely the game. Oh, no stutters. Okay, so this has been a thing on. I mean, I'm I'm a little concerned because it's been a thing on Twitch lately um, with other games, and it looks relatively smooth to me. You know, it looked like a looked like a Switch game. Yeah, that is that is the Mario Kart cart. It's a cool cover of the overworld theme. Yeah, harpsichord. I mean, she is a like an, an European princess. Makes sense to have some aristocratic chamber music. We got items. I actually don't know anything about this game. I've watched the trailers, uh, but I haven't picked it apart like some people have. I know that there's uh, there's an interesting crowd that uh, I I understand who want these games to be, like, statistical, tactical RPGs. With levels and stats and stuff, and gear. I get that, because I kind of want that too. But uh, I know that there's a, there's a whole crew of people who have been following this game very closely, trying to see if it's going to be one of the good ones, you know? Uh, I have not been one of them. I, I wanted to be surprised. Even if it's another sticker star. I don't care what they do with the gameplay. Uh, these games will instantly be good because of the sound and look. You think? Did that work for... I feel like that was sort of the... Uh, the approach with Wooly World. And like the, the Kirby and Yoshi yarn games. That it was like... We're going to bet that... People want a real easy ride that just looks cute and sounds adorable. And I wonder how they performed. I should be honest, I don't mind that idea. Let me try my lately. code. Uh, the idea of, like, the last thing I do at night is playing a stress-free, like, stroll. Mildly interactive stroll through some kind of artistic dreamland where no one... There is no pain. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. Uh, Struggling Digs, thank you for the cheer. I'd run Paper Mario. I had to convince my parents every weekend to rent it. Hope my file was still there. Oh, boy. That's, that's the real gamer roulette right there. I did the same thing with uh, Final Fantasy VI. Uh... And I actually, the original Legend of Zelda, not that I knew what I was doing in that game, 
like a grown adult would have trouble finding their way through that game and I like a I think a seven year old no clue there was a save file that had all the items unlocked and I was like hell yeah which incidentally makes me wonder there had to be somebody in my hometown that beat Legend of Zelda who the hell were they how come we never met it's frustrating the internet would have made that problem so simple just to, like post on a local board like hey who save files this ding so weird so weird to think about She's very cute. I do like these beady eyes on all the characters. It's like it's like all almost borderline South Park, you know? Why does B why does it not have the B on it? What if I hit A on B? Ah, worked. Trash game. No gameplay. Psh, you just win no matter what. You still have your consoles and games from when you were a kid. Uh, I have... I have a few choice selects. It's frustrating, because I actually had some really good and rare games. There's a few I didn't have, but like... Uh, I had Earthbound. Um, I had Super Mario RPG. Like, one... It's... it's. I can remember a year when I finally started developing Taste, you know? And that's when I started getting the, gold, the golden goodies. I, I had Secret of Evermore, because that game looked awesome. Um, so like start and the only the only like RPGs I could never find that I don't think existed in Texas was like Robotrek and uh, like Illusion of Gaia. I rented it once and then it was gone. So like uh, those I have no idea where they went. The Super Nintendo games. Starting at N sixty four, that's when I started like actually keeping the ones that meant a lot to me. But and I, and I'm pretty lean about that. So I have like four N sixty four cards. I have like a Tetrisphere. Hybrid Heaven, uh, Mischief Makers, and New Tetris, I think. Um, so, like, N64 is when I started to be like, okay, I, and I, I never owned Wetrix, even though I love that game, but. No Goldeneye? Oh, I, I had Goldeneye, I just didn't keep it. I don't know. I, I respect Goldeneye. Kind of like I respect Halo. But, I feel like. Those games were, are, good specifically in the stripe of constraints they had to had to exist under. Whereas other games, like, some games are timeless. That doesn't make them better. I want to be very clear about that. I think I think it takes the exact amount of skill, the exact same amount of skill, to make something that works right now as it does something that works forever. You just don't know what constraints are going to go away and which ones won't. There's no way to know. So I feel like to some degree that something being timeless is not has has less to do with creative execution than people think. At least that's what that's how it occurs to me. It would be fun to try to play Goldeneye again on an actual N64. I'm sure a million people have done it. And are doing it right now. Tetris is timeless, but isn't it isn't exactly better than most games. I agree with that. I can't remember the names of those dudes, but I I adore them. They vomit out those spike balls and then throw them at you. God. For anyone that played through that phase, like just think about Mario, going from Mario 1 to, you know, Mario 2, but in America that's weird. To Mario 3, to Super Mario World, to Mario 64. Like, that... That stripe of, of creativity and innovation, it happened in such a condensed amount of time. So it's, it's interesting that it feels like... I don't know. I don't know if that same feeling exists anymore. Or if it can happen so fast. Maybe early VR to where VR is now? I could say that. That sounds about right. Mario 3 was a reskin of a different game in Japan. Oh, do you mean 2? Yeah. It's still a pretty good game. It's probably a good thing I never got the chance to play actual Super Mario Bros. 2. I never went back to that. I never played Lost Levels or anything like that. That is a very cute Goomba.
Fuzzy Beetle. Okay. Oh, this game is just super quiet. Try and turning it up a little bit. I don't know about Mario. I personally went from Wolfenstein to Doom to Marathon, then Deus Ex. Only had PCs and then a Game Boy. Ooh. PC was an amazing run, too, in the 90s. Going from, like, DOS to CD-ROM. Uh, in, like... Like, five years? And, and 3D acceleration? Yeah. That's a good point. I, I feel like the PC scene, yeah, was, was the roller coaster. The 3D paper waddle? Yeah. Lee, 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 lee. <laughs> I've, one thing I've always noticed about Paper Mario is that their feet move faster than they do. And it looks really, really cute. Get some magic powers. Oh, another marathon player? I need to go back and play marathon. Like, how does how does marathon age? Remember VR cafes in 96? They were only around for a few years. VR cafes have popped up again. Sadly, I think they may not last, mostly because of COVID, which is sad. I really wanted to experience some sweet VR because I don't have the means to do it myself. I think they'll be back. I do agree that, like, yeah, COVID, COVID has annihilated that sector, but... I still think there's going to be a division between the ability to own all that hardware and set it up in the home and going somewhere where there's just a permanent setup. I, I for, and, and also the communal aspect of it, you know, escape rooms and stuff like that. I think there's there's a totally a market for that. Um, I don't know if this is legal. What I'm waiting for is like karaoke style VR where everyone goes into a room and is like padded. And there are servers, and you can play VR games and watch like a, a readout of, of the the game on the wall, and then hit a button or like use a touch screen to order some sh some like food and some drinks. Yeah, the stuff's gonna get gross, but it's a bar, you know. Uh, scrub everything down and sanitize everything. Uh, and yeah, that's not gonna happen during COVID. But man, imagine hanging out with your boys and having some wings, and pounding some cold ones, and playing Beat Saber together. That sounds like a good-ass night. Uh, use VR to order everything. Well, then only the person playing could order. Uh, which is a little fun. Uh, you have to make a, an interface that looks exactly like Lawnmower Man and order everything through that. Uh, so I, I, see a lot of, I see a lot of good things there, you know? Oh, Buffalo Wild Wings says that here in Mexico? Oh, they have VR setups? That's perfect. That's it. Awesome. Or actually, yeah, headsets for everybody. Oh man, now we're getting we're talking cyberpunk. Woo. I'm gonna go to the VR bar, do some shots, and explore Altheria. Strip clubs are open where I'm from. They can figure out the sanitation. Yeah, it's it's possible. We I think we've observed enough to know how to. If everyone, if everyone works together, I think it could could work out. So the power is a giant folding hand. I had to double take for a second on which X I was dealing with. Oh wait a minute. So do, does this? I I think I remember seeing this in the, in the interview. Does anyone in chat know? Um, when you're doing the thousand thousand fold hands, uh, does it have like HD rumble for the paper? Uh, I remember hearing something about that. How like each Joy-Con would HD rumble as you like fold and cross paper and stuff. That actually sounds like a neat feature. If that's true, I may have made that up. Okay, it is a uh, it is um, oscillation controls. Okay, and it's kind of using the the rumble in the controller. You can like you can feel it flippy flap under your hand. One more man was a formative viewing experience for me. Watched a lot of movies I was probably too young for. Yeah, I guess there's some there's some funky stuff in Lawnmower Man. Huh. Hold on a minute. Okay. 
I'm about to brave the wilds of Nintendo's controller setup. I don't... Whoop, that was a bad idea. Hold on a second. God bless them, they try. But, uh... Oof. Okay, so... Come on, there we go. Okay, now, Max Gamer. You know, it's actually, despite often using the Pro Controller out of habit, it's legit comfy as heck to just have a Joy-Con nestled, nestled in each hand and just, like, splay out on a couch. You can turn off motion controls? I'm not trying. I actually want to I want to investigate the motion controls. I'm hoping that if I'm using Joy-Con that I can move each hand independently and have to like I don't know, that that seems like a fun a fun thing to do. No? Okay. Hold on. I cancel. Let's try this again. Ah, okay, yeah, they're just they're just together no matter what. That's a bit of a bummer. I feel like it'd be fun to use like two hands independently and smooth over paper and stuff. It's weird, though. It, it seems to take inputs from both Joy-Con? Which makes sense. If you move them together, then it moves together. But, like, if you move this one, it kind of moves. And if you move that one, it kind of moves. You can go up with that one and down with that one. So it's just... Any relative motion counts as input. Yeah. I guess that's probably the most uh, intuitive way to do it. Reset them? I, oh, I, I just did. I don't know. You know what? No big deal. No big deal. You can always patch it in, Nintendo. Give me that... Give me that $10 uh, dual hand TM origami mode. And I will be there to buy that DLC. did it in one two switch which they keep using it uh what like the independent control or in e hmm one two switch actually yeah as usual nintendo puts all these doodads in their console and then they show everyone how to use them and then no one uses them um could you imagine any other company on the planet making labo with what's in the switch just like accelerometers and an ir sensor buttons not even buttons, really. And, hey, with some cardboard and some string, you can be a robot. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. If I worked at Nintendo, and somehow I became an executive, and somebody came to me and they said, we have a plan for a game where you make a cardboard suit of armor and stomp around your living room. Like, how... I would just be like, well, I'm going to quit right now because I don't deserve to work here. Absolutely make that. And I'm going to go home and cry. The next Paper Mario could be Labo. Yeah. They're, they're, they're proceeding the groundwork right now. I just can't wait in 10 years. There's going to be a Labo reference in some Nintendo game. And it's gonna, it's gonna cause one of the weirder conversations. Oh, you don't know what this cardboard thing is? Oh, jeez. Okay, well, let me tell you about, like, 2018. I gotta play that. Why haven't I played that yet? I think I still have the cartridge. I'm gonna stream it. Sh screw it. It's already referenced in Smash Brothers. Oh, is it? In what way? Okay. Oh, okay. I wonder if the hints will be funny. Oh, so sneaky. Labo Robot for Smash Brothers? Yeah. There's plenty of DLC slots to go. Three of them are gonna be uh, Dante from Devil May Cry, and then Labo. Except it's just an unfolded cardboard box. Whenever Labo's in a fight, no one gets to play for an hour while he folds himself together. I don't know why I assume Labo would be. What's up, JC? How you doing? When you were using an Xbox and PS4 controller with vibration on, do you feel... Do you find after several days of hard gaming you develop a random shake in your hands? Oh, like a... A phantom 
Gamebration. Hmm. I don't think I don't think I've if if I have experienced that, I didn't describe it to having a rumbling controller in my hand. Um, so it's possible that I just didn't it happened and I just didn't observe it. Uh what I find happens more often than not is that I just forget about force feedback ten minutes into playing any video game. And the only time I do think about it is when it doesn't... When it's like, oh, there's a cutscene and it's just going nuts. And I'm like, oh, right, the controller shakes. <laughs> but it's not like, whoa, I feel like I'm next to this explosion. Uh, I don't mind it, but... for Rumble is one of the things that's... It's, a, it's like, it's really fascinating when it's used in a novel way, but that is so rare. And I think we've all thoroughly gotten used to the ways it's normally used. Oh yeah, Phantom Vibration Syndrome or whatever it was, Penguinicorn. I think that was because everyone was like, everyone was so concerned about how cell phones were going to change our society that there was like a weird cotton industry of, of uh, somewhat alarming stories about cell phones creating tech addicts and stuff. Mindless cell phone drones. Oh my god. I like how they talk in Spongebob text. Except for the mustachio run! I actually don't know what that text is, or what it's supposed to sound like. That's what it sounds like to me, though. Feels weird without playing Rumble. Like, the whole time? Rumble as well as tinny controller speakers were supposed to be the future, but it's mostly just fine. Yeah, I was never, I was never bought into the speaker thing. I think I, I thought about it recently, but... The only game where I was I was genuinely impressed with a controller speaker and thought it contributed to the experience was uh, uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories. But then again, I gush about that game any chance I can. I should play it again. See if it's see if it's up to what I think, or if I was just really like up on myself when I played it. Uh, oh, and, and also, what is it? Death Stranding, actually. I thought too much came out of the speaker. I would have liked it much better if only if the speaker were only BB. Um. Because then, I feel like there is something kind of unique and cool, especially during, like, some of the bigger fights in that game. No spoilers. But BB, like, starts losing his mind. And a really tense and, and kind of visually unsettling boss fight in coordination with a baby crying from somewhere else does kind of evoke a certain, like, anxiety and panic in you. Um, babies crying is kind of like dogs being hurt. It's something you don't want to hear. And you really, 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 like, it, you know, we're hardwired to make it be a red alarm, uh, like a klaxon, kind of. Something we have to help fix. So, like, that was cool. I was actually like, you know what, that's working. I hate it, but I'm supposed to, so it's working. Um, oh, <laughs> pressure-sensitive PS2 buttons? Jeez. What else comes out of the controller speaker? And Death Stranding? I thought, didn't all the codec conversations come out of the controller speaker, too? There were options for that, but I, I seem to recall the default being... All your codec calls would come through the speaker. Like when Dead Man is telling you about uh, mission rankings and stuff. Sam. Got an update for you. You know what's a bummer? I feel like the codec calls and the conversations in Death Stranding are just as weirdly memeable as a lot of Metal Gear Solid dialogue. Like, there's kernel caliber stuff in Death Stranding. And it's a bummer that the memes never really got that far. There's still time, you know? Do you have a surround setup? No. I just have, I have these headphones and I have a sound bar in the living room. I, uh, I do not have, I have not obsessed over audio to the degree I probably should have. Right. That's right, a secret. All right.
I am. I wonder what the process is. The decision making process to like correlate the little chirps of text coming up with somebody's character type. Because Bowser's little little bleepity bloops are like rawr, they're low and angry. Bleh. Grab. Oh, okay. Always a fan of the, or a big fan of the trip. They should be enemies, but now they have a common threat, so they're friends. Yeah, uh, Bowser is, is often a an uneasy ally in the Mario RPG series. But yeah, no, that's a, I gotta admit, I like that too. It's it's a simple dynamic that's used a lot. But oh, is the save point meant to be a sticker star reference? Those look like the foil stickers. Maybe it's just a pleasing... Oh, no, I guess it's probably more like foil origami paper, huh? Probably. Look at that box. That's really pretty. Did you guys ever do the, th like, the thing as a kid where the first time you saw, like, a lenticular sticker or, like, like a glittery pencil or something? You just, like, stared as hard into it as you possibly could. Feel like you were you were going to fall into the glitter dimension. I remember doing that. Just being so amazed with the, uh... The stimulation my eyeballs were getting. You didn't do that? Ah, uh, maybe nobody did that. <laughs> Am I okay? Ah, oh, come on. It's still fun to do sometimes. I remember, uh... Doing that with, like, the walls, um... The walls in the fairy cave in Ocarina of Time. They had like cool crisscrossing. Yeah, the kaleidoscope. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit like that. We'll do that, but with the smelly pencils. Ooh. That was the glitter dimension. It's awesome. There's a lot going on there. You can change the text speed. You actually can't. I guess these are the cutscenes. Oh, that, that's pretty fast. So she's talking slow to be creepy. Got it. Get crumply. Let's try. Let's uh, let's let's role play. Bang. There it is. I, I'm not so cynical as to, like, be like, if it doesn't matter what, like, it, it literally is you get to pick the next line of dialogue. I still like that, though, you know? I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it's, normally, normally by the math of it, I'd argue against something like that. Or be like, why are we still doing this? But there's simple charm in it. The illusion of choice. This music, though. are so good. What an unexpected... What? No! Those teeny little teeth. It's so bad. This is some pretty JRPG-ass fight music. Okay, with guitars coming back into like game soundtracks as a prominent instrument, it's been so long. Like, Final Fantasy VI had an ass load of synthesized electric guitar. It's like 
Blue Dragon had some. Lost Odyssey had some. Persona's got some guitar. But it's mostly like funk. Final Fantasy XIV Fate music, exactly. XIV's got a lot of this wild shit. It's what, I, it's what I love about it. It's like one of the few, uh, one of the few pawns I can come to drink at, you know? This, uh... This side character is pretty, pretty vanilla so far. Usually, usually you, at this point, would expect some kind of wisecrack or something to give you, to, to give you an angle on the personality. Gaming Fishman, thanks for the sub. Yeah, this music slaps, dude. Uh, Snoozer, thanks for the prime. SJ, though, thanks for the sub. I missed a lot of people, I'm sorry. Dom Dominator, thanks for the prime. Yeah, I think that, no, I'm still missing some. Oh, hold, hold on a minute. I'm missing this. Uh, I want to thank you for the streams over the past few months. I recently returned to work after being on furlough for the last three months. Your stream really helped me escape the horrors of Corona. I'm really glad to hear that. Crunch. Uh, crunch rock. Yeah, it's a weird time. It's a weird time. If I can do anything to distract. I'll, uh... That's awesome. Uh, thank you. And, uh... I guess hopefully you're... Ready to go back to work? Uh, and able to do so safely, I hope? Uh, ah, uh, here. I need to, uh... Turn the hourglass too. Rico, sorry I'm late on that. You missed a lot of good hourglass time there. Hmm. Guess there would be multiple waves then. I was wondering about that, and it can be a little disconcerting, so like, you have to rotate a ring, but when you're doing it with a stick, there's no, there's no clear way to know what's going to move where when you move the stick. It doesn't really matter since it's menu driven, but, oh Rico, no worries man. Hey, if you watch them to get those points, you deserve for me to look at this hourglass. It actually just ran out, so, you deserve for me to look at a thing on my desk. Place Bitcoin with hack points. I, I mean, I hope I get a piece of that action, but yeah. Is there anything timing based, or does he just go? Yeah, maybe it's just that. So the battles are more like puzzle encounters. You just have to move stuff around to, uh, like, you win when you move, put the enemies in place, not when you land the attacks, basically. You can proceed to time it. Oh, okay. My gamer powers have grown, and I'm ready to bear it again. Brandon, I, I've suddenly become very, very curious about Super Paper Mario 2. I haven't thought about that game in a long time. Oh. See, like, in my head, I'm thinking the shy guys are the guys I want to move, and I want to move them up. But if I hit up, then that rotates clockwise. Oh, it's timed. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so maybe I just need to do left and right. That might make the most sense. Okay, well, that's timing base. Yeah, okay, there, there's probably like a little damage bonus for timing stuff.
Ooh. Coins. Coins can buy gear and make me feel good about myself. Oh, snap. Brother. Now we're getting into it. Oh. I'm gonna put this out there. Should I? It's kind of a dick thing to say. It kind of is. So I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, this story, the beats of the story, are not that different from most video games that people think have good, like, really good stories. It's just I think this kind of understands sometimes how, like, how it's fun to revel in simplicity. And also, this would, I guess, take place at the end of a, of a normal story. Yeah, I love his hair flip, though. He's so evil. His flimsy paper minions of Bowser shall be reborn. No, he, he would be more like the smooth anime boy, right? His loyal folded servant. Gosh, does text beep sound like boo laughs? Oh, good point, yeah. <laughs> Boos might be the cutest ghosts. I've seen a lot of cute ghosts, though. Meh. Nah. I'd say boos are like top 70%. There's some cute ghosts out there. I imagine he sounded like John Smith. Ooh, that's really good. I want to hear, yeah, I want to hear John deliver like a fascist dictator of a kingdom type speech, but like just use his natural yelling voice. Buzet is top tier. Oh, I agree. Buzet's the like gothic Lolita one, right? Fatal Frame has some fuckable ghosts. I the only like lady ghosts I remember from Fatal Frame are like the ones that drown, or uh, they were they were. They would do things to your dick. Things you don't want. That's for sure. Very bad things. I can't imagine that without John stumbling over his words. That's... Exactly! It's perfect. Oh, man. Okay, John Smith doing... Uh... The, uh... General Hux... Speech from episode 7. Uh, but just, like... Just him, like... Really going for it. Damn. There's a lot of things I want John to do. I'm gonna go get another cup of coffee. I'll be right back, fellas. Alright. I'm in love. I'm in love with French Press. I got some new grounds. Alright. Alright, let's get out of here. Boop!
Might have just needed a breather, you know? I imagine after an ordeal like that, you lodge yourself into a tree and you're like, uh, you shake a little bit and you're just like, God damn it. And then you, you realize, you realize for the first time in your goddamn life, nothing's going wrong. <laughs> so you just hang upside down in that tree for a little bit. Uh, show coffee, you got it. That was close. Uh, well, I'm wearing a black shirt, who cares? I am. Put a little splash, a half and half in there. It's got some, like, dried splashies from the earlier cup of coffee I had in this mug, so I apologize. If oh, wait. Just some, like, leftover grounds or something? That was gross. Always gotta be careful, you know? In front of this lens, you gotta be looking good. So, yeah. Um, I guess half and half is not technically in the bounds of my diet right now, but calorie-wise, it's so little that it's hard for me to imagine that it's going to, uh going to really derail anything given how severe the calorie restriction is and uh good lord do i gotta take my uh i gotta take my my food related joys where i can get them how's the chair i'm really loving it i'm really really liking it um it's it's broken in a bit it was pretty firm at first and i was like yeah it's probably it's probably fine good for, good for my ass i actually don't know if that's true or not i may be anyway uh, but I've been sitting in it for, I want to say, two weeks now, and it's really comfortable. Uh, I can, I mean, I try to take breaks pretty often on the stream. Like, when I'm, people have noticed that I use the BRB stuff a lot, and that's intentional. It's because I, I get up and I walk around and I talk to stuff. I'm trying to keep moving kind of deal. Uh, but yeah, uh, I can, I've been streaming for like eight to ten hours, and uh, it feels great. I've been using DX Racers before, I really liked them too, but kind of twice over their lifespan was about five years. Um, like, look your room, lots of good energy. Well, thank you, yeah, Stephanie decorated in here, and Stephanie is awesome. Stephanie's very, very good about uh, creating warm spaces that reflect personality. Yeah. I, what, what am I missing here? What's going on? I mean, is she like... I don't see her on the ground or anything. This is it. This is all of it. Can you, can't move the camera. Oh, uh, what is the brand of the chair? It's Secret Labs. It is a uh, cyberpunk-themed chair that they did. It looks awesome. Disclosure. I am living with uh, someone who works for CD Projekt Red on cyberpunk. That's actually why I have the chair. Because she gave it to me. So, uh... You know... Oh, Jesus. So, you know, uh, I guess, ethics. Just want to make sure that that's known. However, uh, I ever tried the Herman Miller chairs. So, uh, yeah, I got it because I think sh that's what she's interested in. I don't know for sure, but I think that's the idea. You got a specific diet or are you just doing calorie deficit each day? Mostly calorie deficit. It's, um... The guidelines of the, of the diet are, like... And, and what I've sort of adopted is hitting a calorie goal with certain vegetables not counting at all. So it's like... <clears throat> and, and on top of that, like, not eating snacks or, like, processed foods. Not that I could on this calorie limit anyway, but that's the idea. So, so kind of keeping myself on a, a more strict regimen of certain kinds of calorie sources, basically lean proteins and, and fats and stuff like that. Um, so that's the idea. Mostly calorie deficit... Some amount of, uh, some amount of dietary makeup. Ah, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I, I think I, hmm. This, this creates a weird dynamic when, like, the whole world sheds a currency. Oh, okay. That's pretty fast.
That's a really cute sprite. It's like Mario's like an he's like a 19 1910s boxer. Squaring up on you. Oh. That's a really cute animation. Is it Lego Star Wars now? Yeah, kinda. Just bits everywhere. Yeah. It's interesting how like sometimes the beginning the beginnings of games try to try to target that monkey brain. Just having sequences where you pick up a lot of little little things. Damn it. I don't know why I'm doing this. There's no reason to do this. Sounds cool. Oh, the text noise? You don't like it? I like little the little chirps of people talking. Okay, so you can't get them back. He's clearly grabbing her legs. Uh, how many calories do I consume each day? 1,500 is, is my goal. With the caveat that green vegetables, non-starchy vegetables, roasted or like sautéed without oil, are uh, don't count. So if you lumped all that in, it might be something like 17, 18, 1750, something like that. Some days I try to try to get in a ring fit exercise too, just to kind of keep things moving, keep the calories burning. I'm hoping I can sustain this for, I think, three months. Very loosely targeting three months. We'll see. We'll see my, what my weight loss is like. If I can do that, I should be down to where I'm, where I want to go, or realize that my body's just not going to get rid of certain things. We'll see. Yeah, maybe I don't know. That yeah, that is a whole other mode. It makes total sense that his that, that his hands are like that when you're holding the controller and like moving it. Um, yeah, it makes way more sense playing this with a controller, I guess. Sick. Gross of an oil. Uh, yeah. Well, sort of. So, um, one of the tips in one of the like related dietary posts it it's all a Nutrisystem thing for uh, Instagram but they said that like you could roast using spray oil um, which is oil but very very little um, so basically what I do is I'll I'll spray down a surface like I'll, I'll have a roasting pan I'll put foil on top of it I'll spray the foil down put my vegetables on spray them then do uh, just like just like a quick Z I guess then do salt, pepper, and then some other, like, garlic and things like that, and then toss it on the pan, and then that's what I roast. And you actually get a pretty good pretty good texture out of it. And, you know, it doesn't have the, like, savoriness or the mouthfeel of the oil. It's just not there. But it's food. It tastes pretty good. Um, and it's better than being hungry. So I'm getting better about roasting things in, in bulk. PC building stream with Daddy Cavill in. Three months from now, when I get cut as heck, then I gotta get big. How's it all been working out? Pretty good so far. I mean, there's times when I get hungry, but uh, it's been all right. I'm spending more time making my own food, which is is really uh, really beneficial. And I've had some pretty good uh, pretty good results. Any kind of ambiguity over how many calories I eat lends, leads to me eating more, or leads to me cheating more. The more exact I get, the better. Tim, I, I, I am 100% the same. Sometimes if I have like a restaurant meal, my brain wants to go, well, there's no way to know how much that was, so let's just, I guess, let's, uh, let's just like stop caring for the rest of the day. Like my, my brain always tries to find ways to make me just lose myself in the reverie of eating. Oh no, a green hat. So the like, oh, the dialogue is pretty straightforward and 
Not very quirky so far. The villain was great. I guess I shouldn't mandate quirk for quirkiness' sake, but I don't know. Is this just going to be a generally less humorous Paper Mario? Whoops. I'll have that with afternoon coffee. Might as well have more coffee at 7 p.m. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're just like, well, I'm not sleepy, so I might as well lean into it. I guess that's that's cool. Uh, I can see it being rewarding to like poke around in a level and find a hidden hole that you can just like throw stuff on. I guess I guess my operative question is like why make people gather confetti when you could just have the coins in the hole, you know? Like those there could just be coins there. I guess I guess it's nice to see them all bounce out and feel like you're repairing something. Oops. Did lose HP for that? Yeah. I think when you meet more characters, the charm will start. Yeah, Mario, you know, having a having a mute character doesn't give you a lot of room to work with. You, I, I agree. I feel like you're probably right. I guess what would be nice is if um, this is a way to bait you into just interacting with the environment. And then they can... Uh, Kind of like this, yeah. Not very green of him. They can uh, use it as an event trigger for more interactions with the world. That I'm down with. Because then you can do a lot of things. And now I got a thousand coins. This is a crazy world. Ooh. Hey, Minor Tom. Just kind of settling into super, super... Wait, no. Origami King. Paper Mario. Yeah. Trying to, trying to size it up. Damn right, I got a cool hat. This is a very cool hat. I guess the, the interesting question is going to be, what do coins get you? I mean, just be like, healing items, but my inventory's already full, kind of thing? I haven't. <laughs> it is interesting when, like... When you, the gamer, are getting shit talk, shit talked about and you can't do anything about it. How dare you? Give me a nice coin. Those are really cute. This game's turning me into a folded earther. <laughs> That's one conspiracy that uh one conspiracy that 2020 will probably dish up. The world is made out of paper! Aww, sad little flower. Any water items, or is that just... Ah, trigger an event. Very cool. getting a little more absurdist. I like that. Well, that was a paper. Yeah. It's...
Oh, it's good to help out. You said it. Alright. Right on. I like that. I'm digging this. Stupid tree. Yeah. Rare Birdo sighting. Do you guys think at Nintendo Land you'll get to have your picture taken with Birdo? Famous Mario Gal Universe character Birdo? Do you think you'll just be walking around and a Birdo will just show up? And maybe try to interact with you while you're like drinking a light beer? Be like, I don't know what what, what is this interaction? What do we do? You're not squirting eggs at me, so I'm at a loss. I gotta... Oh, that's cute. I think Birdo's wearing a mask right now. I think Birdo inhaled a, few, a mask right now. I can't even do that. Birdo would be one of those uber rare encounters. Oh man, they could have like rarity. I didn't even think about that. Imagine going to the park every day for a year to try to get a picture with Wario. That'd be sick. Oh, she start massaging your shoulders? Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> and like, it, it'd talk, and like you wouldn't know what it's saying, but you'd still know. It'd be like, <laughs> when it starts like, massaging your shoulders, and you can tell it's like, you can tell what it's saying. It's saying, you look tired. a sick version of the Starman theme. Oh, it's fading already. Damn. I was gonna turn it up. That was awesome. I would want Donkey Kong to smash a barrel over my head, killing me instantly. <laughs> Bring your own barrel to Nintendo Land. I do like collectibles quite a bit. I will try to collect all of them. Because that is a collectible, and that's what you... Are there, are there announcements in that... What? Use a champignon in Toad Town to see all of your... Huh. It's an interesting way to... Provide kind of tutorial information. Gonna play, are you going to get to play Cyberpunk 2077 before it comes out? I don't know. Maybe? I'm not, I'm not like, really thinking about it much. If I were really insistent, probably, but I don't want to be, I don't want to be a bother. So, you know, it can come out when it comes out. Oh, look at all this. Oh, there's gonna be so much treasure in there. It's gold. Oh, shit. Oh, Mario. They made fools out of us. What, what are we gonna do, Mario? They're laughing at us, Mario. What a prank. Yeah. Damn. Damn, it hurts. Ooh, it hurts so bad. I'm gonna be up at night thinking about that one for a while. Just bloodshot eyes staring at the ceiling just like blanket to chin thinking about that time the wood elves got me that good all right i'm officially enjoying this game Brodo's transgender character in the official lore is that well you say official lore where i i am this is a genuine honest question because i genuinely don't know where uh where in the lore is that like clarified I guess I'm just curious about, about like, sources of Nintendo lore in general, or Mario lore. I feel like the concept of Mario lore, like, I know it exists. There's been plenty of things that, like, they've been consistent about with intent about Mario, but... How goes the origami? Pretty well. This is actually, this is a charming game, and that's exactly what I was hoping for. Is it Yoshi K? And Luigi has a big dick. I guess there's some, some stuff I didn't mess with. Just keep going further. This isn't a path, is it? Oh, okay. There's 
shouldn't be here now. Throw, throw, oh, throwing confetti at the broken vine. Good call. <laughs> Berto's a vibrator under a pillow. Oh. Now we're doing it. Luigi hangs brain like no one's business. Now we're getting into more like fourth wall breakage. <laughs> Instantly. Uh, the gender is inconsistently labeled. Yeah, that was my understanding. Is it's a it, it's like a poison uh, sort of deal where the localization of a gender was was changed or in, insinuated to be changed. Um, this, the Paper Mario games are all linked to their companions turning up in pictures at Mario's house, but I don't know if they continued after Super. Huh. Oh, it's in the ma manual of Mario 2. Yeah, I think... I think Birdo, post-Mario 2, was largely portrayed as feminine, while the, the manual of the U.S. version of Mario 2 referred to Birdo as masculine. It was my, it was my very... Uh, very basic and, and extremely circumstantial understanding. Oh my gosh. We got sassy trees. Old wooden teapot man. So they have like the Super Mario World eyes, kinda. What's what's weird to me is that while Mario has certain like unifying characteristics as a brand, uh, as a visual identity, um, it also has gone through many individually distinct art styles as well, um, and those are like referenced in piecemeal in other Mario properties. It's, it's so weird. But like, yeah, the um, in Super Mario World, those weren't there like big columns that just had eyes on them for no reason? Uh, in the background, it was like landscape shots type stuff. Ay, it's like... No, maybe they just had little spots. They weren't actually eyes. I thought they were. Hold on a second, guys. So like... Yeah, stuff like this. I guess I thought those were eyes. There had to be a, uh... I thought there was a... A Mario that had... Landscapes that also themselves had facial expressions. <laughs> um... Eh? Maybe that was just in my imagination. Huh. Clouds had eyes in one. That's true. Or was that just like... Is that just weird pixel art? The lack of, or the clouds that Lakitu ride definitely have them. I just feel like I don't know. It makes me wonder what what are the permanent aspects of Mario aesthetic that are considered universal to the brand, and which ones are tied to specific f branches of the brand. It's more thematic than anything. It's like. Mushrooms make you big. Uh, fire comes out of flowers, I guess. There is there is a princess, and her name is Peach. She wears pink and is blonde. Like the, there were some just very very basic tenets that seemed to cross everything. Didn't the woods levels have trees with eyes, or am I drunk? I do maybe. I know some enemies in video games back in the day were made trans for the U.S. release. As soon as bad to fight women, yeah, poison and final fight. Yep. It's. Mario Maker 2 Hills have eyes? Hmm. It's, it's a bummer because I feel like because of, ironically, because of uh, sensitivity to cult <laughs> certain cultural issues, those characters were either assumed to be male or, or their genders were changed because they didn't want any, uh, any heat. But they accidentally created, like, 
a legacy of trans characters that I'm certain those who are trans would like to feel somewhat represented by. At least there's something. And for trans women, damn, poison's pretty good. Maybe that's a... Maybe that's an insensitive thing to say, but poison rules. They finally put poison in Street Fighter, right? I do not. Discord's down? Once clouds didn't have faces? I didn't think so. Like, the, the big, the big, oh crap, thing about that is that the clouds and the shrubs are the same thing. Uh, or the same sprite, just different, different palette swap. Yeah, this is the new Paper Mario, Slummy Bell. Am I Jaden Smith? Why am I, am I dropping some big brain thoughts on you? Every one of those words was capitalized uh, when I said it. I don't know if you've heard the capitals, but... That is, that is how I pronounced it, so you should have heard it. It's like funk music? It's like disco? I like how they're like, Hey, it's been a while since I tutorialized you, right? Remember? Base player's going off. I'm turning my head. I thought it was gonna loop. It is a happier Marvel vs. Capcom 2 chat pot, yeah. Come on. Yeah, they did not need to go that hard. That's good though. That that is like the kind of caliber of music that Thousand Year Door had, and some of uh, Nintendo's better internal soundtracks. I'm into that. That is very good. I like how that jingle of the attack power up went into the went into the theme. That was very uh, very smooth musical musical note. Oh, let me try it. Let me try hitting the button now. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh, I'm gonna destroy. Never mind. There it is. Okay, so good. There is. There are timed presses. I mean, they're gonna die no matter what. So it doesn't matter. That's good feedback, though. The controller rumbles, and you get a cool little uh, pose at the end. So I guess, yeah, since this is more of a puzzle game, it's going to be interesting if there are fights where specifically you can one-shot enemies by getting the action command, but it will take two turns if you don't. It like goes into think mode, and you're like, hmm, hmm, the music like dips. Please that flourish and then it's back into the battle track. That's really cool. The stand's gonna fill up later. Oh, that's a good, that's a good question, Cosmov. It's like the the Toad followers you get in Thousand Year Door, maybe. If you like keep a combo going, maybe 
Maybe you have an audience come up and like throw coins at you and stuff? I'm getting ahead of myself, but that would be neat. And also make your like your combos more hype too. Oh, oops! Oh, you don't hold it, my bad. You just have to wait, okay. Cool. Time defense. Uh, the more toads you save, the more the stands fill up. Oh, okay. This, that mechanic has not been turned on yet. Now there's this, like, mischievous flute. I always love scores that are just like, hey, you know those instruments? All of them? Get them in here. Let's raid the band closet. What is that? Is that a marimba? Bring it. Harps? Yeah. How many rain sticks you got? I'll take them. Yeah, Jerry, grab the triangle. Yeah, all of the triangles. Just grab them all. Uh-oh. You only get one move, right? Oh. Nope, ring moves times two. I always wonder what the fundamental differences are between Mario RPG and Paper Mario, as well as why Nintendo seems to prefer to make the latter over the former as their sort of Mario core Mario-themed RPG. <sighs> yeah, the Paper series is typically more on their home consoles, whereas Mario and Luigi is it's on mobile or handheld. Now it's both, so it'd be nice if a Mario and Luigi came to Switch. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, Fell Scion. I, I can only assume they like they have the reasons. I don't know what they are. Maybe just artistically, they're more proud of this this uh, version of Mario than the Mario and Luigi kind of pixel art Mario. It's further away from like normal Mario, I guess. So maybe they don't. Maybe it's just a question of like they don't want too many powerful representations of Mario in their like vanguard of products. I, uh, I'm just spitballing, man. I have no clue. That's I've wondered about that too. I feel like you can kind of tell most of the time that Nintendo is very cautious about where they put their brands and the, the projects they greenlight. Um, they always swing as hard as they can on any platform they're on, so I don't think they, they like have an A, B, or C team or anything like that. I think it's more like they invest tons of money in the series that earn ass loads of money. Um, so, like, it makes total sense that Mario Kart is not a mobile-only title. Even though they released mobile ones, so whatever. Like, sometimes, sometimes they're a little inscrutable from the outside, but I feel like they're just... ...fiscally responsible to a fault sometimes. And it may be part of that. Hey man, for all we know, the, the Mario and Luigi team, maybe they only pitch handheld games. Maybe that's what they like working on, who knows. Although, there was another bit from this interview that I thought was really interesting. Uh, he, I think he talked about how he'd been producing Paper Mario games for a long time. And uh, something about how the team had to, to mix it up because... It's something to the effect of, like, the third time anyone works on a project like this, um, they typically want to work on something else. It's something to that effect of like, yeah, when somebody works on three games straight in a series, they typically want to do something else. I was like, yeah, that, make, that makes sense. That's like, what, ten years of your life on only one kind of game? I'm trying to... I guess because of that, I'm trying to approach games with more open minds. I'm trying to. put me in Mario? They should. Nintendo, why aren't you putting this man in Mario? Weren't there... Forgive me if I'm wrong, but weren't there, like... There, were, there was a mechanic in other Marios where, like, you could flourish and get, like, additional rewards. Things that didn't increase damage, but, like, you're hopping in the air and you hit a button and Mario's like, yeah, or does a backflip? I can't remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, the Mario and Luigi Cross Paper Mario game. I never played that one. Let me do that. That was Thousand Year Door. Okay, I loved that. 
Is uh, Paper Mario any good? I'm really liking it so far. I'm really liking it so far. Okay, I'm gonna get the hammer this time, I promise. Oops. Okay, now I needed a little more than that. I went super too shook the Wii mode that happened. Ah, uh, maybe that's what I'm thinking of. I thought that mechanic was cool. I like I like swag mechanics, like ones that that by the, the even the mechanics of the game don't or sorry the game mechanics acknowledge don't really matter, but it's just a way to sort of express more buttons. Thumper was pretty good about that. Uh, I feel like there were well no it was score based yeah if you could put together certain combos that were that were inviting more uh, input complexity. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know, you could talk to the trees. Is there an indication how much papers you have? No, it's, I mean, this bag at the top left goes from like red to yellow to green. So as far as I know, that's, that's the indication. It's the relative color. Color of that little sack. Oh, it'd be build star meter faster. Yeah, yes. God, that was such a good mechanic! Bleh. I also appreciate systems where, like, you can play, you can play, like, straight and narrow. Like, just, just risk-reward. But if you, like, like, swag builds you special meter or builds you mana or something like that. I've always liked that. Systems like that. To a degree, I feel like Doom Eternal kind of scratches that itch. Of, like, you can, you can hang back and take all the safe shots and try to stay away from things. But all the rewards are around going forward and playing with flourish and playing playing clean. I think a large chunk of the internet is down? Ooh, really? If anyone cares, Cloudflare is having problems, so half the internet is breaking. Oh, what a day, man. This is like when Amazon Web Services went down, yeah. Ouch, Llama Potamus, thanks for the sub. Yeah, was a I like in DMC. Uh did DMC have that? I remember DMC4 had the, like, I like that DMC4 had the, like, you could rev your sword during combos. That's, like, an extra little thing where you can sort of throw inputs on the game. Discord's been down for a while. Damn, that's intense. Hey, Johnny Uppercut. Just chilling with some Paper Mario. It's going pretty well, actually. I, uh, this game's pretty charming so far. I'm really curious to see if the, where the combat goes. Um, I, I believe that they have a solid... Uh, a pretty solid gameplay system. Uh, I like I like the idea of it. It's all gonna depend on like the combat design. It it's easy to think that it's just going to be a series of one-dimensionally recognizable and extremely extremely 100% solvable encounters, but I hope not. Hope that that's not the case. Find an acorn or something. This game is a puzzle game more than a combat game. All the fights are puzzles. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm okay with that. Mine broke. Okay. I like the idea. You know, that can work. I've been waiting for. Actually, it's happened a couple of times, but uh, I've been enjoying. I guess I should say, the attempts at merging like Picross with uh, a larger kind of game archetype. I'm playing, what is it, Murder by Numbers right now? I'm pretty sure, actually, I'm pretty sure that's the name of it. Uh, it's been a while. Don't, ignore the anime trash, don't worry about that. Uh, anyway, it's really good. Where are you? Is that what it's called? Yeah, it's really good. Um, it is basically like Phoenix Wright, except Picross. You saw a titty? Yeah. There's some titties. They got, they got some titties here. You ever play Pikmin? Yeah, I really liked Pikmin. Um, I'm I'm still hoping that Nintendo ports Pikmin 3 to the Switch. It's weird to me that they haven't, but... Hmm. Yeah, no go. Branch manager? Okay. 
it's rumored that it is. Yeah, it's... I mean, it's like... Nintendo has clearly been okay with porting certain games up to the Switch. It's... It's a game, you know? I think feel like that's enough. I love the charm and aesthetic of this game. It's made me finally accept I'll never get another Thousand Year Door. Yeah. I mean, the Mario and Luigi saga has the developers from Thousand Year Door on it, right? And they're kind of closer to that. But, yeah. It's, uh... We gotta, we gotta let it go eventually. And also, it's been a long time since I played Thousand Year Door. So I could just play Thousand Year Door again. What pisses me off the most is that Space Invaders Invincible Collection isn't available outside of Japan, and Space Invaders DX is only available with the $200 Special Edition. Of... of what? <laughs> is, there, is there a Special Edition Space Invaders that you're trying to play? Oh, you missed the mash of Mario and Luigi's gameplay with paper aesthetic. I gotcha. Yeah, that was that was a good that was a really good union. Oh, there's literally no Space Invaders on the Switch. Oh, that's weird. Why is that, old Grand Sappy? I feel like it's a Taito, right? There's been there's been some Taito games on the Switch. Huh. Or like, what about Space Invaders Extreme? Did they just stop porting that around? That may not be what you're looking for, but... Nintendo said they were porting every first party from Wii to Switch. I would be extremely hyped. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big forward-looking statement to make, but... That'd be cool. I got a chewed acorn back. I gotta go. I gotta go dunk it in the river. I do think breaking from the turn-based combat has let them better utilize paper theme with stuff like the origami. Yeah. Yeah, that... That is... While true, I feel like the... If, if they can... If they can make that a fun and enjoyable interaction piece over the run of the entire game, then yeah. Uh, and I guess... I guess they should have faith. Nintendo usually makes their games just long enough to contain all the good ideas they had. I guess I guess I'm just like I have this weird sort of anxiety where I'm like, this game's gonna be 60. It's gonna be like 20 hour game stuffed in a 60 hour package kind of deal. It's a it's a very mild thing to have anxiety about, I guess. How many craft? Th wait, how many craft things can they do from here on? Oh, I guess we'll find out. That's where I get to be, uh, I get to be, uh, lazy and selfish and just sit back and let, let creative people perform for my entertainment. Oh, Grand Sappy. Tuna's usually good about not padding. They thought they are going to be short if they need to. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. I kind of caught myself in the middle of opining. And of, of any company in any development group, I could trust to uh, think of a million ways to make the same idea interesting and unique, it would be Nintendo. They're, they are probably the industry best at that exact thing. <gasps> What's going on in the background? Some boys waddling, some big boys waddling away? Oh, oh it's raining. So this isn't the first time that, like, the world of Mario is presented to be some sort of facade. Like, literally paper thin, or in the case of, like, Mario 3, a stage play and things like that. I, uh... It's interesting that that, that seems to be a recurring theme. It's one of those, like, things about Mario that seems to cross a lot of different creative Mario brands. Hey, what's up, Mecha Arc? How you doing? Maybe we can. I will say the the tutorializing is they're laying it on pretty thick, but you know. I'm a I am a professional video gamer. So 
if they if this if this helps ease uh maybe younger or less experienced hard gamers in and that's not too bad you get told about the plus button by like 500 different toads so are you uh you're a little further into it Oh, that was your, there was a stage play. You're right. Yeah, it did have the, like... Yeah, it had the stage front and then the audience. Yeah, and the, like the orchestra pit. I forgot about that. Oh, well, combat was a stage play. The world wasn't really, right? Huh. Soul seed. Oh, the first ribbon area? Yeah, no spoilers. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's doing something. He had to sing a whole song to announce the return of his vibrance. Oh, man. Oh, was there a lot of compression there? Sorry about that. That's Twitch's bitrate, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Tightened up my timbers and put the funk back in my trunk. Shrubs. Open up for my main mustache. Well, we brought the funk back to the forest. It's a pretty powerful opener. Out of that. All right. These sweet sap logins, funkiest trunk in these woods. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I love to see it. That's a soul seed. Ah. I did, I did miss that little bit, thank you. Between this and Ooblets, I really want to buy a bunch of cutesy games. You should, man. I, I, th I think contextually, there's, you know, I think we, we need whimsical games right now. This is an unexpected problem. Oh, okay. Actually, it would be pretty fun if there was this whole song and dance, and then you like you had to go back and talk to them again, and they're like, "Oh, this is awkward." We say goodbye. We did the song. Like, this is just weird now. Aww. <laughs> hey, FPS Sean. Thanks for the sub. Momopotamus, thank you. For the for the resub. Appreciate you. Oh! Look at this poor guy. Wedged in there? He's not having a good time. <laughs> oh, Paul Adam Kantoski. All is well. Or it's getting better anyway. I don't know, I had a weird headache today. I feel like I'm just in a weird frame of mind. Well, at least they got these video games. You gonna try a ghost? Yeah, no, I, I bought it. I downloaded it. I was I was kind of more curious about this game to begin with and just felt like I could use something a little uh a little light and whimsical. I 
that all toads wear the same vest. Also, like, we did that little hand flap. Ran. Oh, there he goes. Oh, okay. Ah. Okay. That yeah, sounds like a real fiesta in my right ear. <laughs> Tipsy Texas Pharmacist, hey. How you doing? Okay, well, that's an interesting use for coins. Again, it, I guess the real test is going to be if any of those bonuses matter. If you can beat everything in one turn without using the coins, calling for backup. Maybe it'd be worth it just for the hype, you know? Oh. So wait, did that Toad just admit to shitting his pants? Still in the bathroom. Marvelous. God bless. Yeah, that music cut out. That's wonderful. So peaceful, man. nature. That's all we need. Right here camping. Damn. Felt to be color splash. Yeah, me too. I packed up my Wii U, though, because I ran out of space on my shelf. and two actions. Hey, what's up, Una? Good to see you. I want to call my... I want to call my boys in. I want to call my boys in. I can't. It said why. Huh. We have to do it. Oh boy, I just realized how hot it is in here. What the hell? Oh. Ah. Oh. That's an interesting and pretty precise timing window. Oh, no, wait, there's one guy. He's hopping. He's having a good time. Hold X for the boys. Oh, my bad. Okay. X. I may have translated it to Y subconsciously. Definitely done drawing for the day. My arms are shaking. Woof. Yeah. Time for a break for sure. This is relaxing. Just gonna hand stuff to friends that I don't use anymore. One of the reasons <clears throat> one of the reasons I don't buy physical. <laughs> what was the last one I was I guess if you were a bridge, you might decide to start playing a little tune when people walk walk over you. But yeah, I'm the same way. If, I, if there's anything I decide I'm not going to use anymore, I usually try to pass it along to somebody as quickly as pos possible. Try to find... <laughs> hey! Like shoving me over? Um, I guess that's fair. I need to go right in the middle. I'm going to go walk out and play some Doom? Right on. See you, Jersh. I, uh, man, I gotta get back to Doom. I've been, I've been itching about Doom, but so many new games have been coming out. So many great games, actually. I feel like I feel like just the median quality is getting really, really good. I'm from poop to pep. How's the game? I like it so far. 
Gameplay-wise, it's ramping up pretty slow, but, you know, that's not unexpected, I guess. <laughs> Perhaps a fire flower will be what you require. And toads turn into moths, I guess. That's cute. They still bench healing from 7 Remake? Okay. It's so... you're right, and that's disgusting. It's... this game is so... so vicious. It's gone from 10 out of 10 to 0 out of 10 so fast. Because it stole. It stole from video games. Oh, jeez. Aw. That's nice. We'll turn to ashes and grow again. They're going pretty hog wild on the putting eyeballs on things part of this game, huh? We must burn! Oh, I don't have... I don't have fire flower anymore. Oops. Well, didn't mean to do that, but that's alright. Yeah, maybe don't start fires when everything's made out of paper. Oh. There's more guys in the They say things, I love it. But they actually tell it they show you the solution before you have to do it. That's interesting. Okay. I'm i I'm seeing them like layer on layer on a little complexity now. Alright. X for boys. I'm holding X. I don't think I can do it yet. Maybe now's not when you do it? Hmm. Find the fire flower? I need it! Did I miss out on any very intense political debates or was that yesterday? No, not today. I don't recall any intense political debates in the, in the recent memory. You only get boys when you're changing the rings. Gotcha. All right, thank you. Is that a party heart shirt? Mm, almost. It's a party mode shirt. The hit Let's Play series from Kinda Funny. Look to control its Y for boys. Okay. I still don't really see the uh, like. I still don't see an on-screen prompt, which. But it must be during the rings, yeah. Flatten the yellow dude? Oh yeah, that might work. Um, mash this dude first. Yeah, it's during the ring moment. I'm gonna get some, get some boys in on this one. It's strange to me that they show you the steps you have to undo, basically. I feel like that... I forgot again. I feel like that massively reduces your, uh... difficulty in solving the puzzle. You have a limited amount of confetti. Sort of? But it seems like you can collect one more than you will ever need. I bet if you... If you if you walk far enough away from stuff too that generates confetti, it kind of turns back in back into its original form, so you can smack it again. Man, I'm stacking up all these coins. That's, that's the extent of how I can interact with him. Aside from him telling me that he's nervous about camping. Sure difficulty will ramp up eventually? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I guess hopefully my, <clears throat> excuse me. Hopefully my open pondering sh is not constituted as, like, criticism. I'm just kind of, I'm, I mean, curious. These are the things that I'm looking forward to seeing how they navigate. help you, bud. I really do. Ha! <laughs> Completely unrelated. Well. <laughs> he scared himself straight. Oh, 
Oh, playing Ooblets? Uh, I like it a lot. Um, it's cute. It's, um, the scope is a little narrower than I guess what I was assuming the game would be about. That's just me assuming stuff, so I can't really hold that against it. Um, I like it. I like it. It seems like, uh, the pace of the game is a little sl slow is not the right word, but it's got a pretty relaxed pace. That's kind of what it feels like, so. I am kind of curious, um... I guess aside from just completing tasks set in front of you, there's not there's not really a stated overarching goal yet. Aside from just helping out. Is the battle system enjoyable and hooblets? Yeah, it's charming. I didn't see a whole lot of complexity out of it. Um and most of the fights, if I just picked the best, like, there was a clear best thing to do in any given turn. And if I just did that, I've won everything. So, uh, the combat system has potential, but I didn't see a lot of that potential expressed in what I played. But it, you know, it's... All of that's down to the, the um, card design. Where, uh, hold on a minute. Expect that to be a toad. Just got home from work, ready to spend it with my favorite community. Hey, nice! You done for the weekend, or maybe that's not what your schedule's even like. Oh, firewood used is happy to burn. I'll make that very clear. You're doing what the fire wants. Pokemon love to fight. Weekend dream? Yeah. Save the kingdom, maybe? I mean, not that I would need something like that. It's I don't even need, like, a, a narrative long-term goal, but a gameplay long-term goal, I think, would be... Would give it a little more, like, intent to it, maybe? Huh. I don't know how to set things on fire. It's the first time I've said that. Hmm. I feel bad because I really like seeing those little, those teensy little like micro stories play out, relying on environmental interaction. And if I bop these plates, something will happen. Huh? Got, oh, set a set a boy free. That's good. Yeah, whack. I haven't played a Paper Mario game since that was in your door. But there's still partners you can recruit. It seems... I don't know. That's a good question. I think this game has partners. I could be wrong. I think somebody in chat would probably know. Fireflower? Yeah. I thought I found one, and then it was a toad. So that was weird. Uh, I don't know where Fireflower is. I don't think you can go in there. The house has eyes. <sighs> yeah? Unless I'm just missing something. Which kind of feels like I am. Talk to Flower Toad? I think I did. This guy? He bloomed himself. Which might be an Arrested Development reference? Taking an After Effects break to eat a salad? Ghost of Tsushima looks weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna start that uh, in a minute here. I think I might take a break to eat a salad too. Oh, it's already three? Yeah, I can probably do that. Toad off the cliff? I don't think so. I don't think you can really move them around. Yeah, you just kind of squ squirk off of them. Show salad. I don't think I would be actually eating a salad. Let me think. What do I got? In the, what do I got in the fridge? I have some leftovers. Yeah, some maple tofu that I would probably eat. A um, it's a leftover Blue Apron. That's where you had a wilted fire flower, right? I thought I did too. I don't know what happened to that flower. Uh. Where did, I don't know where that went. Or did I did I leave it somewhere? Maybe I go back to Yeah, that's really confusing to me too, because I for sure don't have it. Um Unless there's a different interface to uh to find it? Yeah. 
Okay, so it, that is purely a combat item. <gasps> How did you know I'm a streamer? <laughs> is that actually like a... Is that, a, is that like a gameplay behavior profile? <sighs> or maybe streamer is more like a... Like the the ribbons, those kinds of streamers. Yeah, so I have the I, I have the fire flower. That's just not what it's used for. Huh. Maybe, maybe I can come back later. With a, uh, a fire ability or a partner that can set things on fire. Everything's calling you out of nose. Yeah, everything's about me. That's clever. Oh, thanks, Paul. Yeah, I like this. I like this coffee mug a lot. Ugh. Okay, this is a good interaction of mechanics. I don't think they'll let me do boys button right now. Hey Andrew, how you doing man? Glad it's Friday. I am too, but you know, every day every day is an impossible vacation for me. Sorry to brag. But specifically, there's some good games out today, so having the time of my life, man. Yeah, the music in this is so good. They are, yeah, they, they are very thorough with their tutorialization in this game. What else came out? Uh, Ghost of Tsushima. And Rocket Arena. I'm actually really excited to check that out. It looked it looked fun, you know. I used to play uh, after Smash Brothers came out. There were Quake mods that tried to make it more like that. About like damage would just get you knocked further back until you got ejected off the stage. Um, that game type is really fun. Yeah, Death Stranding on PC. Cross code. I just discovered. It, you know, it's new to me. So. Story of Seasons? Yes. I want to check that out. I am an... I... Man, I spent a lot of... A lot of long weekends with Harvest Moon. I remember, like, getting nervous when I got married in that game. And it's weird. I was bummed. Like, once you get married, your NPC wife only says, like, two things. Ever. It's kind of a bummer. Nah, thank you for gifting a sub. Right chill of you, dude. I was on Gladstream the other day. Motherfucker has 51,000 subs. That's some big stream numbers right there. This is a weird world we live in, huh? Tuned in, is the game good? I'm liking it so far. Um, I don't... I think people... Circumstantially expect a lot of different... Oh my gosh. That's what those guys were. Oh, paper mache enemies? Okay. They're like lanterns? I think, uh, I think people kind of have different expectations for Paper Mario. It's like Mount Fuji in the background. Oh, the wrapped up Prin Princess Peach Castle. Uh, imagine rolling in $25,000 $25, a month. Yeah. I mean, at that rate, half of it is probably taxes or like 40%, but still. Oops. Oh, I didn't just see that. Those Who Remain? Is that on PS4? I'm actually not familiar with that game. Yeah, big darn. Only 10k a month. So it doesn't count donations, which are tax-free. They shouldn't be. 
Master space. Those those count as tips, I'm pretty sure. I think you have to report that. Most people don't, I'm I'm certain, but I think uh, I, I guess I'm not a CPA, but I mean any any income you get has to be taxed of to some degree, theoretically. Like, if you sell something and you make money, you should claim that on your tax returns. Theoretically. I thought tax rates were much more forgiving in the States. Uh, um, I mean, they're, they're really low right now. I believe cash tips aren't taxed really well, digital tips are. I think that's, I think that's the, uh, only if you make a profit on the capital sale. So, like, you sell it for more than you bought it for. Yeah, cash tips, um, I think they're supposed to be claimed, but there's no way to track them. So, they're not. That's why people want to get paid in cash, too, sometimes. There's no paper trail of having to pay taxes on it. Yeah, no waiter ever does. I think that's one of those things where the IRS kind of looks the other way. Also, fundamentally, it's probably not worth your time to edit a waiter, or to audit a waiter making like 40k a year. It's interesting. Uh, I, w I did read an article a while ago about how the IRS has had to change tactic because rich people have lawyers and pursuing them is costly because the lawyers just slow everything down if really efficiently. So to actually, like audit people successfully they have to target this weird middle stripe of people that are making enough money to justify the time auditing them but are not so rich that they can afford really good lawyers to be a pain in the ass that's how capital gains usually works it's only on profit not the full amount you receive you can also claim against losses on capital sales interesting okay then my understanding was incorrect i thought i thought that that count of his revenue. That's really cute. He's got little paper bits all over his face. If you gift enough money, the person gifts the money, pays the taxes. Is that true? You have to pay money on taxes you give to someone else? That doesn't make sense. I mean, maybe it's true. Like I said, I'm not a CPA. I should probably know these things, huh? I feel like I may have been claiming, I may have been claiming uh, in income as taxable revenue when it wasn't then. When your wife's a lawyer? I imagine that does help, yeah. I'm gonna pound this butthole. I've been pounding a lot of buttholes in video games lately. Oh shit. Oh. oh it just stuns it in the overworld? Or, huh. So, like, larger enemies you don't even fight in, in the combat mode? Huh. No need to brag? Always a need to brag. Game description? As the lights go out, the embers of darkness are stoked in the sleepy town of Dormont. Confront uncomfortable horrors, keep your sanity in check, and survive. The night in this story-driven first-person psychological thriller that released physically today. Alright, that sounds cool as hell. That's PS4? They can look at your sales if half your tips in cash or and, Oh, hold on. They can they can look at your sales if half your tips are in cash and based on your sales, you only claim 10% of sales, they will audit you. Most tips are on cards, so it never really comes up anymore. Ah, okay. It makes total sense that there would be like a like a like a red flag uh, combination of, of uh, monetary factors. Mom did her best, thank you. That's interesting. I track every dollar I earn in an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, when I earned it and how much, so on and so forth. I then email that to an accountant and they figure it out. I'm also broke, a broke bitch boy, so I usually get money back. Um, that's a good idea. Yeah, I've started tracking that more closely this year because my uh, my incomes and, and business costs are obviously a lot more complicated than they were before. But you know what? That's a 2021 problem. 
That's Bragman. I'm drinking some nice ass apple juice. Hey, you know what? No. You don't even have to do that. This is brag time, alright? Brag. You got the next 10 minutes. This is a this is a full brag zone. Brag about your bitchin' ass apple juice. You know what? This coffee is effin' great. I love it and it's delicious. And it makes me feel good. JCS titties, that's great. You see yeah, you do seem very enamored with them. That's great for you. You get to, you get to live in live in both worlds. Paper mache monstrosities. For now I flee. Long live the princess. So are like are toads supposed to be like royal vassals, I guess? Revenue Canada showed up to a friend's pizzeria and audited him off the numbers of flower bags he ordered versus his declared revenue? Damn, that's tricky. There's like a path going over here. Hmm. Alright. I have daiquiris in my freezer now? Nice. Toads are peaches simps. Yeah, they kind of are. They kind of are. Now that I think about it. Peach has got a pretty... I mean, minus all the kidnappings, Peach actually has a pretty pretty good setup going. Oh, no! Number four! Son of a bitch. Number three was probably that fire. Simping is king shit? Yeah. Real true, real true men pledge their absolute life and fealty to a six out of ten lady. Hot take it for Daisy over Peach. Yeah, I mean Pauline is better. Rosalina's better, despite despite the mom vibes. Peach is the uh, the basic bitch of the Mario universe. She got that super powered dress though. That's pretty cool. Paul Adam, you heading out? Alright. Thanks for watching. With the first boss, it's a new puzzle mechanic. Ooh. Take Yoshi over Rosalina any day. Yeah, Yoshi's a real bro. Like you said, Yoshi instead of Luigi. Oh. Captain Tioed? Captain Toad. Yep. Functional art installation celebrating large scale plumbing. Mario is interacting with a pipe based art piece. It's like a warp zone, really? Okay, so this is fast travel. Neat. I was able to buy a new game for the first time in a long while after my girlfriend and I paid off our credit card. So I got Ghost of Tsushima and she got Paper Mario. We're switching once we're done. Hashtag brag. That's awesome, Axel. Congratulations. It wasn't It wasn't until a few years ago that I was able to finally, finally hit that treasured moment of having positive net worth as a human being. And I don't even mean emotionally, I mean financially. Spent too long getting paid too little. But, you know, I had to break into some competitive spaces, so that's just, I feel like it's just kind of the price you pay. Are these all locked? It's so good to not owe anything? Yeah. It makes it, it makes it feel like things are just maybe one extra little step from completely falling apart overnight. It's nice to, it's nice to not feel like you're constantly scraping all the time, or just be reminded, like, every time you have to pay for something, that it's not really yours. You haven't really earned it yet. Ugh. I hate that feeling. Went to pick up liquor today and the employees weren't kidding around. If you weren't wearing a mask by tomorrow, you ain't getting in. Mask become mandatory tomorrow in Quebec. It's probably a good idea. 
can't hurt, really. Most people don't have positive net worth. Congrats, man. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a big deal. Or it was for me, anyway. I was able to enjoy it for a while, and then, and then some shit went weird with life and stuff, so... It was a bummer to... Feel like I was I was slipping back under for a while, but then life slowed down for a little bit, and I was able to able to cross over the Rubicon. One of the things I try not to take for granted is that I've never really been in massive debt. Just a small loan to get set up out of college into a big boy job. Yeah, I mean, frankly, I was the same way. Uh, or I need to stop saying frankly. It's a weird it's a weird tick, and no one says that. I, yeah, it was the same way, and I, I can, uh, I can respect you, respect, uh, where your head's at. Most of my, most of my, uh, most of my debt came from, from switching careers from something that paid pretty well to, like, writing about video games. So, sometimes to, like, make rent and buy food, you know, I had to run up some credit. What's up, Mabro? Good to see you too. How you doing today? Thank God it's TGI Fridays, am I right? Bocula, thank you for the sub. Oh, Sailor, hey. Thank you for the sub, man. Sorry I, sorry I missed that. How you doing? Look, like it's been a while. Oh, oh come on. Yep. There we go. Doc, you're on it. Oof, I'm getting really hungry though. Yeah, it's 3.15. I've only had like an egg and a little handful of cereal today, so I should go eat something. Hold on, let me let me match this save point. I'll take a little food break. Okay. What I'm what I'm gonna eat's already been made, I just have to warm it up and eat it, so. Let's say maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, I always I always underestimate. So let's say 15 minutes. 15 minute lunch break, and then I will come back to Mario's. See you guys soon. Okay, guys. I really should push this into the place before I start talking. So I don't annoy you dudes with a bunch of uh, mic repositioning sounds. I think I might actually switch over to Ghost of Tsushima here. Oh, I don't know why I didn't. I guess I, I was feeling this, I'm still feeling this game when I went on break and I was like, oh, I'll keep playing this. And now that I'm looking at the clock, I think it might be about time to mix it up. Because I actually do want to check out Rocket Arena later tonight, too. Um, I'm curious about that game. I don't think anyone... I saw John tweet about it and I was like, oh, Rocket Arena, right! Um, and I also just re-upped my, like, Origin Premiere membership so I could play Command & Conquer Remastered, so why not? You know? One of them things. Ooh, look at you, little guy. Save my own sniff. I suppose I could tell you some stuff while I'm here. Give me some free coffee? Alright, I'll take- Ooh! Running speed. Decreases running speed for me. Why would I decrease running speed? What the- <laughs> Alright, I'll go save. Frank. Hellion Live, thanks for the sub. Uh, okay. Spilled your apple juice? Well, now you can, I guess, Brandon, you can brag that you smell like high-quality apple juice. That seems like a pleasing aroma to have around. Okay, very quick break. I'm gonna actually say hi to Steph real quick, and then we'll get back with Ghost of Tsushima. See you guys soon.